Well, after an extensive amount of research, studying, uh, contemplating nervousness, et cetera, et cetera, I think I have this Caterpillar uh, D311 Series H generator good to go. So I can actually sell it um, to get it out of here. Uh, basically what happened when I bought it, I bought it back in March, uh, got it here, oh gosh, June, something like that. Got it at the property in June. And uh, I bought it on an auction. It, it runs great. Um, but the, I'm guessing the company that had it before I bought it tried to rewire it from uh, high voltage to low voltage and did not do it correctly um, at all. And since they did not do it correctly, what happened is it fried the reactor and voltage regulator, or uh, I guess a regulator of some type. Um, fortunately, I was able to source those parts, uh, new old stock. Um, I can't remember. I, I haven't done much on the, video, on the video of this because it's kind of been, I don't know anything about these. Uh, so it's not my place to try to show you how to fix something that I don't know much about, but I can tell you what I did. Um, so basically replace the reactor, replace the rectifier or regulator. Um, let me see if I can find the parts here. Yeah, so here's one part, 2L2101. And then the other part is, oh, here's what this part looks like, that 2L part. And you could see how hot this got. Um, I think you can see how hot it got because it was wired incorrectly. Um, this required solder joints, which I was not able to reproduce. So I actually ended up making some pigtails and screwed it onto the new part. Um, and then I'm looking for my other part here, which I'm not seeing it at the moment. Um, which is disappointing. I don't know where it's at. Let me go over to the other side. Maybe it's over here, sitting over here. Oh, here it is. And then the other part um, is, this box isn't in great shape, but it was uh, 5L7027. And this is what it looked like. But you can see that one got kind of crispy. So that one is bad. Uh, I don't know the sequence of events. I just know basically somebody got loose with this thing that couldn't follow directions. When they put this panel on here, they uh, covered up the wiring diagram. Uh, so I actually ended up getting a book for it and, um, you know, just kind of went from there, did it piece by piece, tested some parts. Uh, I already put the cover back on it and everything because I wanted to test it out. And there's actually some live wires in there that uh, I'm somewhat uncomfortable with trying to videotape something and deal with that. So um, what I want to do is just for posterity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. Uh, it is close to freezing outside. So this thing is a little cold natured. So I just got a little snort of starting fluid. I mean, I don't expect a mid 1960s engine to diesel engine to start right off the bat. So ran it for a little bit earlier. We're just going to test the Test to make sure we can get, uh, earlier when I tested it, we were, I was getting about 224 volts at 60 hertz, which is which is right where it should be for what we would want. So I uh, tested all the internal components and everything with a, um, infra, uh, infrared thermometer, made sure all the components were, were nice and um, were nice and cool. And I, I don't think there was the, the reactor that I replaced got up to 65 degrees, the regulator slash rectifier got up to like 87 degrees and the resistor, which is a, it's a hundred ohm resistor. That was like at 189, but I would expect that to be pretty hot because it is a resistance uh, piece of equipment. So um, it had some additional wiring in it that I took out just for clarity, um, for ease. And if anybody wanted to put that in, they can, because basically what they've done is they've used a three phase 
uh, panel here and they put some single phase and uh, so single phase um, breakers in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. I've already fired, like I said, I've already fired up. So we'll see if she starts without any starting fluid. I don't know if she will. Um, batteries are pretty dead and I don't wanna, I don't wanna kill the batteries. So if it looks like it's not gonna start, then I'm gonna go ahead and just shoot a little uh, starting fluid in there. Not too concerned about that at the temperature that I'm operating it out right now. It started fine this summer. Um, I just don't want to deal with the two dead batteries, etc. So let me get the camera set up and we'll test her out. One thing I learned quickly is you don't even want to start this thing without your plugs in. Turn the fuel on. Saw a spark in there. Didn't like that very much. So I suppose off it comes again. Don't know what would be sparking in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up again and see if I can get that spark to form. And that way I know where it's at. because I'm not really sure about that. So, try it again. Because like I said, there's nothing in there that's warm.
it all crammed in there, so I'm gonna have to go over um, how it's all pushed in there and um, kind of take a, a peek about it. <clears throat> um, my guess is one of these metal tabs on the wire was touching something, so I'm just gonna have to dig around in there and uh, figure that out. I might even leave it open for right now until uh, until I have time to do that. But for the next hour, I can just tell the next hour what I did. Um, so, but yeah, I mean the engine runs great. When you saw it start, um, you know the batteries are just kind of weak, just because they haven't been. It has, this thing hasn't been run much. Um, batteries were new in March, I believe. So, I'll just leave this open and then let the next owner deal with that and in case they want to rewire it for 480. Because <clears throat> it is a 240, 480, um, but you can use the voltage drop and and the RPMs to get you your 220 and 60 hertz. Um, what you did test it, I uh, was running 222, I believe. You couldn't see it, and obviously it's too loud for me to even yell it. Um, but I'm um, basically going across leg one and leg two. It was 220 point something, or 222 point something, and then leg two to three was 222 something, and then both of them tested right at 59.9 or 60 hertz. So my guess is you want to speed it up a little bit um, to get a little bit better hertz, but there's a fine, fine adjustment on the um, throttle itself. But I think what I'm going to do for right now for this thing to go in storage is I'm actually going to pull the batteries off of it. That way they're not uh, hanging out in uh, the cold. Uh, this thing does have coolant in it, so I'm not too concerned about anything freezing on it, so that should be fine there. Um, I may in the next couple days try to decide or try to remember to pick up some test strips. So I figure I'd just do a quick walk around. Um, so it's a CAT D311 Series H, uh, 30 kilowatt, um, three phase, which you can do single or three. It's uh, wired for both. Uh, runs, like I said, you heard the engine run in the video. Uh, does 222 volts at about 60 hertz the way it's set up right now um, The starter was rebuilt before I bought it supposedly uh, looks plays looks and plays the part um, No major leaks that I've identified. I mean considering it's been sitting here for I mean you can see under there that that oil dry has been there since July and um, I don't see anything on it um, the only thing that's really ever concerned me is uh, right up there that top radiator hose is leaking uh, looks like it's just coming out of the hose itself um, you know so that is what it is um, you can replace the hose or not uh, oil is fine there's no no major leaks that I've been able to identify um, on it seems the batteries the alternator seems to charge just fine so yeah, that's what it is. A little, a little smoky in here, but that's fine. You'd expect that from a cold diesel engine. Um, the voltage gauge and the oil pressure gauge work, and I'm pretty sure the temperature, the engine temp gauge work. Can't read the service meter right there. Uh, I can't read the, the numbers on it. Um, it does not have its own uh, fuel tank on board. You need a you need a fuel supply of some sort, so that's something to to consider. So I'm gonna get this thing buttoned up and um, put it in the shed and call it good. So thanks for watching.